Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by loserpool.com. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simeon, and on this short edition, we'll be conducting something of a deep dive into one of Arsenal's reported transfer targets. We'll be looking at Fiorentina midfielder Jordan Veratu, who has been linked with a move to Arsenal in these past couple of days. Uh, I was joined on the line by one of... Uh, Europe's most well-renowned Serie A writers. Uh, she does a fantastic job. Uh, she's from right here in the UK, but she works for all sorts of fantastic outlets. She is a fountain of knowledge when it comes to Serie A and of, in particular Fiorentina. Joining me on the line is Serie A and Fiorentina expert Chloe Beresford. Chloe, absolute pleasure to have you on the show. How are you, first of all? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me on. Good, it's our absolute pleasure. There's not many people with your knowledge of Serie A and, of course, <laughs> Fiorentina. And that's why um, I've reached out to you today, Chloe. Uh, we're talking about Jordan Veratu. He's a player that Arsenal are being linked with quite strongly at the moment. Am I right in saying, though, it looked as though he was off to Napoli? Um, it did. Um, it's a bit of a strange one, really. Um, it, it did look all set and done with Napoli. And then uh, apparently uh, Veritu's wife had said that she didn't feel safe in Naples. Um, and then it, it looked like it was all off. But then um, I've seen something that says that she's now denying that she said that and she's saying she's going to take legal action. So I'm not quite sure what's gone on, but obviously something's happened and um, it doesn't seem at the moment like that transfer is going to go ahead. OK, interesting. And, and Veritu was at Aston Villa in the Premier League for a little while and it's safe to say that probably it didn't really work out there. Um, he then moved on. But what's he been like for Fiorentina and how would you describe him as a player to our listeners who probably haven't seen much of him? Um, I think uh, anybody who saw him play for Aston Villa, I know when Fiorentina signed him, I reached out to a couple of Aston Villa fans that I know when they were saying, oh, you know, he's dreadful, a dreadful player and he's not, you know, he's not fitted in at Villa at all. But so, you know, I, I, I didn't have very high expectations uh, of him. But then as soon as he started playing for Fiorentina, I was like thinking, yeah, actually, this look, he looks like a really, really good player. And it it took me by surprise, actually, because expectations were so low. Um, he's uh, an excellent midfielder. He In his first season, he played a bit further forward um, and he got lots of um, assists. He's He's good at scoring free kicks. Um, and he's good at taking penalties. So that aspect of his play in terms of being a bit more of an attacking player and creating chances uh, is really good. Um, and then in the second year, uh, the coach decided that he would play more of a defensive midfielder and um, sort of shielding the back line a little bit. Um, and he did a good job. Uh, I have to say he's, he's good in the tackle. He's good at just winning the ball back and playing a simple pass. But in my opinion, he was wasted in that role. And um, whilst he did a good job, it wasn't really showcasing the full range of his talents. Um, so I think wherever he goes, he, he would be much uh, better suited to a, a slightly uh, advanced midfield role where he can create and he can pick out a pass. And um, that's, you know, that's what he's good at. OK, and I'm just looking at his statistics here for... Uh, the season that's obviously just finished, 33 appearances, sorry, in Serie A, five goals, three assists. Um, it looks as though, you know, he played quite a big role in Fiorentina's season this year and, and Fiorentina's season did take a real turn for the worst, didn't it? I mean, I'm assuming that Jordan Veratu is not to blame for any of that, but it's just interesting, isn't it, how the team as a whole season completely fell away. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't um, take any of his stats from this season too seriously, really, because the whole team underperformed. There's lots of issues going on. Um, they they sacked Pioli because they were kind of mediocre. And then after they did that, the whole team just sort of fell apart. And I think you have to look to the death of Davide's story and the fact that Pioli held that team together mentally. Um, for for quite a long time, and then I think when he left, it kind of, you know, the, at the end of the day, they're human beings, and maybe they kind of did a big breathe out of all their grief, and and it, it, you know, Montella who came in is is a good coach, but 
I think it wasn't to do with him or it wasn't to do with Verity or any one player in particular um, because there were things also going on behind the scenes. The club has now just been sold and the previous owners were very unpopular. The fans were protesting. And then in the end, the crazy situation on the last day that Fiorentina could mathematically have been relegated and thankfully they weren't. But, you know, there was a whole set of external circumstances that were going on um, that (laughs) sort of made this really anomalous season. So um, I wouldn't pay too much attention to that because Verity actually did quite a good job under (laughs) under what must have been very difficult circumstances for him. Absolutely. Do you think that Verity is suited to the Premier League? I know he's played here before, but do you think that a club like Arsenal would be a positive move for him? Do you think that Arsenal should be going all out to get him in? Um, it's hard to say, really, because obviously he struggled before, but I think he has grown a lot as a player since then. Um, he's quite, you know, I, I guess the Premier League is a bit more physical and he is, he, he, I don't think he's tough enough to cope with that. Um, whether he's quite at the level Arsenal want to be aiming for, I'm not sure. He'd have to, I think, take a step up in terms of his performances to be you know, to, to improve a side like Arsenal. Because, I mean, after all, that's what they want to do in the transfer window, isn't it? They want to improve on what they've already got. So I think I think he's he's maybe not quite there, but it's one of those that could go either way. He could really make that step up or he might, he might if he stays at the same level, I think he would probably ultimately be a slight disappointment. Wow. A bit interesting there. Really interesting. Because <laughs> there are lots of Arsenal fans, as we do, and... I'm sure you'll know, even though you're not an Arsenal fan, you've probably seen on social media, it's probably the most reactionary fan base there is out there. Um, Mm -hmm. But, I mean, Arsenal fans are keen to see some recruits come in. Um, It's interesting you say that, because me personally, and as you'll know, Clay, we've spoken before on uh, my other podcast, which is Simply Serie A, and I'm not, um, you know, I'm not too keen on this transfer I don't think that this is the right way to go for Arsenal. But I wanted to speak to you to get your opinion on it and your thoughts on it because your knowledge of Fiorentina and Serie A, of course, is far superior to mine. Do you think that, firstly, Fiorentina would be willing to sell? And secondly, what sort of price do you think it would take to get him out of there? Um, I think I think they would be willing to sell um, because I think... You know they've got a new start under this new owner, and they want they want to sort of make a clean break from the sort of troubles and problems that they had before. So I think they'd be they'd be okay at selling them because they'd use the funds to reinvest and and build a new side. Um, I think from memory they were quoting about fifteen million. Okay. And that's euros, not pounds. But um, I think I think that's what they were saying. I think for that fee, he's probably not not a bad buy. And you know, um, at the level he is now, he could be a good squad player. If if he can improve, then he he could be he could be a really good first teamer. But it's a bit of a gamble, and I think that's perhaps why I can sense your hesitation a little bit because Absolutely. as he is now, I don't think he's probably good enough for what they need. Lovely. Great stuff. Chloe, thank you so much for joining me. Really, really appreciate it. Do you want to let our listeners know how they can find you on social media? Because you do lots of fantastic work. Yeah. um, So on Twitter, it's at Chloe J. Beresford. And on Facebook, you can just search my name, uh, Chloe Beresford, and and my page will come up. Brilliant stuff. And we'll include Chloe's uh, Twitter uh, tag as well in the description. Chloe, thank you so much. And uh, look forward to speaking to you again in the near future. No problem. That was the brilliant Chloe Beresford, and we'll be bringing you more player profiles over the coming days. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit subscribe, and follow Chloe on social media for all your Serie A news. Uh, We'll be back uh, very, very soon, I'm sure. Until then, guys, take care. Bye-bye.